The Detroit Lions finished the 2022 regular season with a 9-8 record and ended the season by winning 5 of their final 6 games. They didn't start the season this hot as they went into their week 6 bye with a 1-4 record, then dropped the ensuing 2 games to the Cowboys and Dolphins to fall to 1-6 through their first 7. There were rumblings that Dan Campbell wasn't the guy and that he was going to be the next Lions coach to be fired like several others have been in the past and that biting kneecaps was a joke. However, things started clicking in a big way and Detroit nearly made the playoffs. And for this team to be that close to making the playoffs only fueled the fire. And for the first time in a very long time, the Detroit Lions are terrifying, and it's because they are doing everything right. In today's video, we are going to break everything down and discuss what the Lions can do in 2023. It may surprise you, and without further ado, let's begin. And we are starting today's video by discussing what the Lions have done over the past few years, and what they have done so far in free agency, and how this will positively impact their 2023 season. You may often hear the saying of build through the draft and supplement through free agency in terms of how to build a football team, but is there an example of this? Detroit isn't the only example, but they've done a damn good job over the last few years. They drafted a Pro Bowl right tackle in Panay Sewell in 2021, and later drafted a pretty good receiver, which by the way is an understatement, that you may know by the name of Amon Ross St. Brown. The NFL Draft is a very fun time for the league and is a brief weekend in April where teams can set themselves up for long-term success, or in some cases, the opposite. But if you can get two starters from a draft, that is more often than not a very successful draft, and in the Lions' case, hitting on both Sewell and Amon Ra in what was General Manager Brad Holmes' first draft was a home run. Both Sewell and Amon Ra, assuming they stay healthy of course, are going to be starters for this franchise for the better part of a decade, and of course assuming they work out the long-term contracts, which is a couple of years down the road. But two good draft picks does not make a team, and how would Brad and the scouting team follow this up in 2022? Because remember, Brad Holmes' first move as a general manager was to trade away longtime franchise quarterback Matthew Stafford, meaning he had to hit on his picks because if he didn't, he would be a legitimate villain in this city because he would have essentially gave the Rams a Super Bowl winning quarterback for two draft busts. That is of course if the picks did not hit. But in his second draft, the Jags bet on the long-term potential of Trayvon Walker instead of the more pro-ready prospect in Aiden Hutchinson, and the Michigan man came home with the second overall pick in the 2022 NFL Draft. About an hour later, Brad Holmes made a hell of a trade to acquire the speedster in Jamison Williams, knowing he wouldn't play for most of his rookie season due to a torn ACL, which was fine because this was supposed to be a long-term rebuild to begin with. And the Lions still won 9 games with very little impact from Williams, and will not only get him back in 2023, at full health by the way, but have two first round players too. And even when Jamison was on the field in 2022, defenses had to adjust because of his sheer speed. If he gets by you, he's gone. Which opened up Detroit's run game behind their big bruising offensive line. Entering the 2023 offseason, a huge need for the Lions was corner, and you can argue that it is still a need, as you can never have too many corners in today's NFL, but they addressed this position by bringing in both Emmanuel Mosley and Cameron Sutton. They could still go corner with one of their two first round picks, but by bringing in those guys, it does not make corner a screaming need for them in the first round of the draft. And because the Lions have been killing it over the past few offseasons, they have a chance to do something that a lot of people are not discussing, at least not in the national media. Quarterbacks are going first and second overall, and we know that, which makes Arizona a huge wild card at three. They have a terrible roster and have a new head coach and GM in Jonathan Gannon and Monty Ozenfort. They could attempt to trade way back in the draft and receive another first next year, as they desperately need talent, or Detroit could work out a solution for them to go from 6 to 3 and to draft Will Anderson from Alabama. Not to say they are for sure going to do this, but to say it is very much a possibility. 
They have four picks in the first two rounds, which are of course their own first and second round picks. The Rams from the Stafford trade, and the Vikings second round pick from the TJ Hawkinson trade. So they more than have the ammo to go up and get Anderson and stress opposing offensive lines out for the next few years with Anderson and of course Aiden Hutchinson. And even if they did not want to do this and have 2022 sixth round pick James Houston, who had eight sacks as a rookie by the way, be their opposite pass rusher of Aiden, they could very easily take the best corner in the draft at six in a player like Christian Gonzalez from Oregon. All of this to say, they still have the 18th overall pick. So the Lions have positioned themselves to go from 9 wins to 11 or 12, maybe even more, in 2023 because of the long-term plan they started a couple of off-seasons ago. The true wild card in the draft at the moment is Jalen Carter, and I do think he will be available at 6 if Detroit wanted to draft him. I bring him up because having a defensive line of Carter and Hutchinson would be problematic. The selection would be based on character evaluation, and I personally do not think they will draft Carter, but his name will come up and I did want to briefly discuss this. What will also greatly benefit the Lions is playing in the NFC North, and especially in 2023. All the Minnesota Vikings heard throughout the 2022 season was that they were frauds and that they would lose when it mattered most and the whole nine. And while they did lose in the wildcard round, they still finished 13 and 4, and I don't think you can view this anything but a positive in the fact Detroit nearly swept this team. They had them on the ropes in week 3 and lost by a score of 28 to 24. Dan Campbell made a poor coaching decision late in the game, which allowed the Vikings to drive right down the field and for Kirk Cousins to lead a game-winning drive. However, the next time they played was a much, much different story. The Lions didn't just win in the trenches, they bullied the Vikings in the trenches, as Minnesota ran the ball 17 times for 22 yards. Kirk Cousins was sacked 4 times to Jared Goff's 0. Now, this was one of the best games of Kirk Cousins' career as he was dealing all day, and so was Jared Goff too for that matter, but the Lions' offense quite literally could not be stopped. Ben Johnson, the Lions offensive coordinator, had a response for everything, and even had the aforementioned Panay Sewell catch a pass for a first down late in the game to move the sticks. And why this is being brought up is this is who the Lions need to beat to get to the top of the North in 2023. Yes, they need to beat the Packers and Bears too, and we will get to them, but for now it's how do we slow down the 2022 Offensive Player of the Year in Justin Jefferson. They did in the Week 3 game, but they did not in Week 14, as Jefferson had a career-high 223 receiving yards. And for Detroit to sign the two corners in Mosley and Sutton, they've already made it very clear of what their goal heading into 2023 is. Figure out how to slow down not just JJ, but any premier receiver the Lions play in 2023. Will players still quote-unquote get theirs against Detroit? Yes, of course, because they are paid to be the best at what they do and are amongst the best in the world. But for as positive of an end to the 2022 season as the Lions had, they finished 28th in points per game allowed in 2022, and that simply will not cut it this year. And to be fair, Lions fans, because I know this will be brought up, their defense was improving by season's end and during the final eight games allowed just 20.4 points per game. As for another team in their division, like the Chicago Bears, are they going to be a better team this year? Yes, of course, as it's hard to get worse than what they were last year, but I still think the Lions will beat them once, if not both times. And for any Bears fans watching, that's not a shot at what the Bears are doing, because I love what they're doing in the Windy City. I just think they are going to be much more competitive in 2024 than they will be in 2023. And again, that's not to say they're going to be bad next year, because it's not saying that. As for Green Bay, they are the hardest to predict because of the quarterback transition from Aaron Rodgers to Jordan Love, but from a team perspective, the Lions roster is very talented. And I do think at this point, the NFC North, for 2023 at least, is the Lions to lose. This again is all without the Lions adding two players in the first round on a roster that is already good. I do want to discuss another route the Lions could go down and why they are one of a few teams that could actually afford to do this, and it's draft Anthony Richardson, with the intention to develop. Will they of course is something else, but they could easily give him a redshirt year behind Jared Goff, and in 2024, let him take over. 
The benefits of this selection, if it worked out, would be obvious. You'd have a 6 foot 4, 240 pound weapon that can also run a 4 4 40 and can more than hit Jamison Williams on the deep balls. And if it doesn't, yes, it would be a first round quarterback draft bust, but what I want to emphasize here is Jared Goff will turn 29 during the 2023 season. If Richardson is available at 6, or even if they traded up to get him, they still have 3 picks in the top 55, or maybe 2 other picks in the top 55, assuming they would give up picks 6 and 18 to get him. But the main reason why I like the idea of Detroit going up to get him, which again differs from them actually doing it, is they have a ton of other capital to hit on picks in case it doesn't work out. It would be as risk free of a gamble on him as you could possibly have, and for anyone hating this idea, which if you are a Jared Goff guy I understand, then take the worst case scenario here, which to me is still a damn good scenario, and use two first round picks at the best position of need available. That would of course be assuming they do not trade up to get Anthony Richardson. And a reason I brought this up is because Jared Goff concerns me when under pressure, and if the Lions go anywhere this year, which full transparency I do expect them to go to at least the wildcard round of the playoffs in 2023, is they need Goff to play better under pressure this year than he did last. Out of 40 qualified quarterbacks, Jared Goff finished 34th in completion percentage under pressure and 29th in passer rating. The difference in his numbers under pressure versus when kept clean is noticeable, and while that is technically true for every quarterback, it's a substantial difference for Goff. When Goff was kept clean in 2022, he completed over 73% of his passes and had a crisp 24-3 to touchdown to interception ratio. He also had a passer rating of 113.4, but when under pressure, this dropped to completing just 41.9% of his passes and having a 5-4 to touchdown to interception ratio. The passer rating also dropped 53 points to 59.4. Quarterbacks like Baker Mayfield, Marcus Mariota, and Davis Mills all were better under pressure statistically than Goff in 2022. And that is truly the biggest concern I have with the Lions in 2023, is how will their quarterback perform under pressure? And while this isn't nothing to worry about because it is worth noting, how many games do you think Jared Goff will truly have to win next year? Meaning they're down double digits entering the fourth quarter and need Goff to make five or six throws in a row under pressure. I personally do not think it will be many. And even if there is, Brad Holmes has done a good job, excuse me, I'm sorry, great job giving him weapons as they have the receivers and also signed David Montgomery from the Bears to replace Jamal Williams. Losing Jamal from a fan standpoint was tough given he broke the franchise record in rushing touchdowns for a season, but collectively they can replace the production. Maybe not from a rushing touchdown standpoint, as that will seemingly be impossible, but from a yardage standpoint they most certainly can. And even digging a little further into the rushing standpoint next year, the Lions running backs collectively will have less, because the ball will more than likely be spread around more to both Amon Ra and Jamison Williams, which comes full circle in the fact that the Detroit Lions are terrifying, and they remind me so much of the Eagles and the step they took last year, and that team is incredibly difficult to beat, and so will the 2023 Detroit Lions. And that's all I have for today, I hope you enjoyed, if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel as it would mean the world and help the growth a ton. Thank you guys so much for 69,000 subscribers, nice, and until next time, as always, please be safe and have a great day. Love you guys.